sales and all of those steps that matter. But ultimately, everything is experience. Every single part of your business is part of your customer's experience. So the supermodel is a five-step framework, but the quick answer to your question, Carl, of how do you do that? You connect your story to your customer's story. You do it in a way that is meaningful and memorable and illustrates how you are different from everyone else who does what you do. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mortgage Influencers, where we bring you professionals who share insight into the latest trends, tips, industry technology, and services to help you be a mortgage influencer in your mortgage business. Okay, so we are live. We want to welcome you to another episode of Mortgage Influencers. My name is Ginger Bell, and today I have with me the a most wonderful Mr. Carl White. The talented and beautiful Mr. Carl White. Yes. So great to be here. And I uh, say world famous. And world famous. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then our very special guest who I'm excited to uh, to talk to. She has so much to share with us, and that's Brittany Hodak. So Brittany, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to hang out with you guys today. Yeah, I I mean, I honestly, when I was preparing for today, I was just getting so excited because I have a, a honestly a list of things for you that uh, I just want to ask you and dive right in. But for those of you who don't know Brittany, um, we're going to get into her background a little bit, but you need to hop onto Amazon. It's also, I think, on Barnes & Noble, um, several places. But Brittany wrote the book that's called Creating Superfans. And I got mine a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's newly, what was the release date on it, Brittany? January 10th. So we just had our two-month birthday. Yay! Um, and so, honestly, guys, um, I mean, you can see I've already got so many markers in here as far as what I'm noting in my business. So definitely worth hopping on and getting that. And uh, so you can find that. I'll drop some information on where you can find that um, later on, too. But let's just hop in. And Brittany, for those of you who don't know Brittany, I had an opportunity to meet Brittany at the Housing Wire Marketing Conference that was in Charlotte, Probably what, two, 2019, maybe even 2018. I was going to say 18 or 19. It's yeah. been a minute. Yeah. Which and is great because we get to say we're old friends now because we've I been know. together for like five years now. Yeah. And I think that was maybe before kids for you even, right? I, I think I had one. I okay. had one then. And now I've got two little boys who are five and almost three. So they keep me busy. That's a good thing. Boys are awesome. Yes. Um, and I actually had my son with me when we met. So yes, and he is so me. impressive. And I always love meeting people's kids because I feel like it's, you know, like a nice little like window into my future. And he taught me so much about esports. And I followed him and all the success that he and his colleagues on his team have had in the years since then. So yes, that was a really fun event. Yeah, it's nice when we make those connections. Um, and so I'm going to dive right in and I want to start off with, because I love your first job was as a mascot for a radio station, right? This is true. Yes. I was sting the bee. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things, Carl. Um, and I'm going to ask you, so just what did you learn? I mean, being a mascot, so many things like, okay, I'm a mascot. What can I learn? What did you learn about being a mascot? Well, I loved being a mascot because I really got to see like unfettered excitement, both from, you know, very small children all the way up to adults. And I didn't realize when I accepted the job that I was like the living embodiment of the brand, you know, like people saw me and they thought of the radio station. And it was such a cool job to have. And it really started me down this path of thinking about fandom and, experience and brands. And, you know, I think so many people make the mistake of thinking that your brand is your logo. When in reality, I know you know this, Ginger, that a brand and a logo could not be more different. Your brand is the way you show up for your customers every single day. Your brand is you and everything else 
everyone else who's a part of your team. It's every interaction, every conversation, everyone is in the experience department and every interaction is part of that customer experience. So I think being a mascot sort of like set me down that path to realizing that people crave experiences. They want experiences. And if you want to create a brand that people remember, that they love, that they come back to, you've got to think about the entire experience you're providing. Well, and the connection with that, with the mascot, and Carl, you do such an amazing job with what you teach in your coaching. Um, he has what he calls a Thor's hammer. And so it creates that kind of connection to where, I mean, I don't know that I would call it a, a mascot, Carl, but it definitely, it has become an industry-wide term. And so creating that link, if you will, right? Yeah. I think that's the thing with any uh, uh, um, Brittany, you're the you're the pro in this. So correct me if I'm wrong, but like it seems like like for me, when I use the word brand, it's like like you want to um, how do you say it? You want to like uh, like create your create your own vocabulary in the industry. So like for loan officers, like if if I've got a uh, some FHA program I'm using. I would actually call it my own special name, you know, so that if if one of my competitors is if if they call one of my competitors asking for that program, they're not going to have it because I named it, you know, Carl Special Loan Program or something like that, which is a is, is a branding of 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 my you know unique programs that you know just kind of owning the language is, is that am I on the right track there, Brittany? Yes, absolutely on the right track. I like to say your brand <laughs> is ultimately how somebody feels about working with you and what they would say about you to a friend. That is the best way that you can, um, you know, encapsulate your brand and everything that you're talking about, the content that you're creating, the, the programming that you're creating, the, um, the, the logos and the looks and the feels and all of the things that you're doing are all part of that. They're all encapsulated within this bigger idea of your brand. I love it. You know, and talking about, you know, the whole brand, the, the bigger picture, um, and, and really creating something that people remember. You, you started in really creating events that people remember in, uh, in your first business that you started. And uh, a little fact about Brittany um, that not many people can say, Brittany has been on Shark Tank. And so that was one of the things that, um, and, and again, it's those things that people remember those unique things. So tell me about your business and what you did for branding, because you, you did it for some pretty big people like Dolly Parton and Kiss and things like that. So tell, tell me about some of the things that you did, and then we're going to link it into maybe some things that people can do in the events that they're creating. Yeah, so I ran a fan engagement agency where I created one of a kind keepsakes for several of the biggest artists on the planet. As you said, many of the biggest brands I worked with professional sports teams and movie studios and, you know, huge theme park brands and recording artists to create things that connected them more closely to their fans. Sometimes that was a physical artifact, like a coffee table book or a fan club um, magazine. Sometimes that was working with concert tours and movie openings and, and other and other more event-based. But sort of the through line was creating things that connected fans more closely to the brands that they cared about. And I sort of had this light bulb moment the more I started working with brands and even even with um, like unknown companies like startups who had big budgets but didn't necessarily have a lot of brand awareness and they wanted to you know partner with a celebrity to um, to come up with a with a campaign and what I started to realize was that the way that people created these super fans the way that they created people who cared more about who they were and what they had to offer and started to say like, oh yeah, I want to choose you at the exclusion of everybody else. You know, they kind of went from commodity provider to category of one. What they were doing was connecting their story with their customers and prospect stories in some way. So they were making their thing, whatever it was, relevant to the lives of those people that they were trying to reach. So they were standing out in some way. And so that's really the 
you know, the, the aha moment that led me to say, oh my gosh, it's not fan engagement that I love. It's customer experience that I love. It's helping people understand how to differentiate themselves in a sea of sameness, how to solve this overwhelming problem that every single business owner faces, which is apathy. Like plenty of people should know about what you're doing the question is, do they care? Like, have you given them a reason to? Have you connected your thing, your story, your superpower to the needs in their life and the lives of people around them so that they think of you when they cross paths with somebody who needs the service uh, that you provide? How do we do that? Well, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, Carl. <laughs> There's a question a, everybody's, that's, everybody's that's, asking. That's it's a like, loaded okay, question. How do we do that? <laughs> I get it, Miss Shark Tank, but uh, I, how do I, I do it? I love the loaded question. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I talk about, remember infomercials, Carl? What's like the craziest thing you ever bought from an infomercial? Um, Mine was the clapper. Ah, oh, for the lights? Yeah. Did you have a bump it, Ginger? No, didn't have a bump it. I feel like you're, you've got like the beautiful long hair. I could have seen you as maybe like a bump it gal, <laughs> like a George Foreman girl, Carl, maybe a snuggy, anything. And I, I, um, I can't think of anything that I actually bought from an infomercial. To be honest with you. I'm, like, right, I'm, well, I'm an Amazon guy. And I know everybody watching has seen infomercials and pick any infomercial you want, like any of the ones we've talked about, anything else doesn't matter. All of them, there was always a moment where after showing like really exasperated people, um, it would, you know, go to like black and white and whoever the the main character was would like look at the camera like, ah, right? And they would look directly at the camera and they would always say, there's got to be a better way. Mm. And then enter that miracle product. Again, whatever it is, like sham wows, bumpets, Foreman grills, slap right. chops, whatever, right? All of a sudden, this miracle product appears and then everything is different. Life is better. It's simpler because they've addressed the struggle and then they've introduced the transformation. They've shown you how you're going to go from like the before times where everything is like, hard and painful and black and white to this like beautiful new technicolor world where everything is wonderful. And the reason that that storytelling trope like was used again and again and again and again and again in every infomercial in history is because it was very successful, right? It's very powerful to say, well, let me tell you about a problem. Let me show you how much your life is going to suck if you like live within this problem. Now, let me tell you what you have to do to like overcome it, to have this transformation. And so when I talk about storytelling and brand storytelling and connecting what you do to what your customers need, it's that same sort of idea of presenting yourself as the solution to something that they are struggling with. And in my book, I go through what I call my supermodel, which is a five-part framework that's all about how to systematically examine your business, figure out what you need to do to go from commodity provider to category of one through things like storytelling and personalization and marketing and ops and sales and all of those steps that matter. But ultimately, everything is experience. Every single part of your business is part of your customer's experience. So the supermodel is a five-step framework, but the quick answer to your question, Carl, of how do you do that? You connect your story to your customer story. You do it in a way that is meaningful and memorable and illustrates how you are different from everyone else who does what you do. You're not just another person that they can call and maybe you'll get their business if you're the fastest or the cheapest or the closest. You are the one. And if they want to work with the best in the world, they're going to call you. So how do we do how do how do we do that? Yeah, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna dive in because one of the things that that um, and Carl has the top podcast in the mortgage industry, um, and has been the number one for many, 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 many years. And what I, I almost feel like Carl, it's like if you can tell someone, okay, if you're gonna do a podcast, and we have a lot of people that are doing podcasts, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be you know doing some podcasts together, Carl, talking about how to do podcasts. Yeah. So if, let's tie this. So let's say you, that you have a loan originator who's doing a podcast, and they're gonna invite a real estate agent on, 
And so using that as kind of the framework and, and helping that real estate agent tell their story and then bring the customer in to that. Um, because I think one of the things right now in our industry, what we need is exactly what you're talking about. How do you take your story that you provide and bring in your customer's story to be able to provide that aha solution technicolor thing? So, you know, it's like, how, how can someone do that? So if you have an originator, um, say Carl's an originator, I'm a real estate agent, he's inviting me onto his podcast. What kind of questions would he ask to, you know, uncover my story to start with? Well, I think I'm going to take a step back because I think it's less about, you know, unless everybody is is on the call wondering how to have podcasts that perform better. Um, I, I think it's more about how to cast a story that's going to help you get more customers, right? right. And that may not be through um, somebody who who is listening to a podcast. But in the supermodel, the first pillar is S. So super is an acronym, S-U-P-E-R. And S is start with your story. Okay. And when I say start with your story, I don't mean lead with your story. I mean, your story has to be what's driving everything about your brand. Because mm -hmm. I am always shocked when I say to somebody, tell me why your prospects should pick you. I love it. They're stumped. Or they're like, I've been doing this 20 years. And I'm like, okay, well, does that mean if somebody has been doing it 25 years, they should pick that person instead of you? Right. What is your uniqueness? What is your differentiation? If you're in real estate, why did you choose to get into real estate? Like you could have done anything. You could have had any career, but you mm -hmm. chose to do this. Why? Mm -hmm. Is it because you grew up in a military family and you moved 30 times before you were 18 years old? And because of that, you want nothing more than to help people feel like a rooted sense of home? Maybe it's because you've never moved, like you've lived in your community for 50 years and you love it and you want other people to love it and discover it. And so you became a realtor to help them fall in love with your town the way you love your town. Like, what is it about you that you bring to your role? You've got to be able to articulate that in a way that makes somebody say, I get it. And you can't do that until you're very clear on your story. So in the book, Creating Super Fans, I talk about how to craft your origin story. I talk about how to uncover your superpower, what it is that if you're not the best in the world at already, you're willing to work at to become the best in the world. And that's something that you care about. And the reason that's important is because, you know, like imagine the Avengers, right? You've got all these superheroes. They've all got their own strengths. Part of what makes the Avengers great is that they are all unique. Like if it was 12 Hulks, you would be very limited in the types of problems you could solve, mm -hmm. right? And it would be okay if it was like a, a problem you could Hulk smash your way out of. Um, but <laughs> there are problems where Hulk is not, is not the right one. So what I mean when I say start with your story is differentiate yourself from everyone else in your market who does either exactly the same or something very similar to what you do. Because if you aren't able to confidently and concisely say to somebody, this is why you should pick me, then what's the logical conclusion? They're going to be like, well, maybe I shouldn't pick them. Maybe I should just work with, mm. you know, my, my mm. second cousin's husband or, or whatever it is. So start with your story, get ultra clear on what it is that you are going to like put your stake in the ground and say, if you want to work with the person who's the best at this thing, then you want to work with me. And that might be that you like are more up on trends than anybody else. You're studying the markets, you know, what's going to happen. It may be that you are like really available. Maybe you're an empty nester, or maybe you're a young professional without a family. So you're like, I'm going to be online at two o'clock in the morning anyway. Like I can DM with you back and forth. Maybe it's that, you know, you have the most connections with contractors because you've flipped homes in your city for 20 years. And you're like, if you work with me, I'm going to help you like remodel whatever home you buy into your dream home, like whatever it is, you've got to understand what your thing is in a way that you can make someone care. Because as I said before, the biggest threat that exists to every business in the world is not a lack of awareness, like it's a lack of affinity. It's apathy. People just don't care. And the best way, the fastest way to make them care about you and your thing is by telling them a story that makes them say, I get it now. I understand. And I think that's important. So we're getting lots of questions coming in. Um, and, and the biggest 
question, and, and Timothy is asking several, um, how do you create your own brand when a company that we work for has their own brand? And I think that's part of it. It, it is your story, right? Or how, yes, how do you know, story. how do you know? Thank like, you, Timothy, for that question. Oh, sorry, Carl, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Like, how do you, like, like I'm sitting here, you know, a, a lot of people may be on this call would be kind and say, I've got a big brand. You know, I'm sitting here thinking like, all right, well, what is my actual brand? Hell, I don't even know, to be honest with you. You know, like if there's a, you know, I'm sure I could come up with something here in a couple of minutes, but like, so, so here I am a loan officer, I close loans. Um, you know, how, how do I decide what my brand is? Because I think when people think brand, or at least when I think brand, you know, I think Tony the Tiger or Captain Crunch or I don't know, you know, something like that. Like, how do I, how do I apply that? you know, with me as a loan officer. So your brand is really just your reputation. It's not a mascot. Mm. It's not a logo. It's what people think of when they mm. think of you. And the way that you create that is by asking mm. yourself, what do I want people to think of when they think mm. of me? What would I want them to say to a friend if they were making an introduction? And then intentionally architecting a plan. Mm. I, in the book, I call it intentional experience design, but mapping out to say, when somebody works with me, this is what it's going to feel like. This is what the experience is. These are the repeatable things that I'm going to do over and over, or I'm going to train my team to do. And Timothy, thank you for that question. I love the question. And going back to the metaphor I used before about like the Avengers versus Spider-Man, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Hulk, whoever, think about your role at your company kind mm -hmm. of like that. Like if you work for Keller Williams or Century 21 or like whatever, it doesn't matter. You are part of that team. Yes. But the customers who are choosing you are not choosing you in most instances because of that brand. That's what gives them like the peace of mind, perhaps, to know that you've got the reinforcements. But it's the same as like a bank that has the like FDIC sign. It's like, yeah, cool. You know that you're going to be taken care of. We have the back end. We have the back office. But you are the brand. People don't work with companies. They work with people. Like that company name might give them the peace of mind to be like, oh yeah, like I know that, you know, I've, I've got like some muscle and power behind this, but we choose the people that we work with. And within the confines of your brand, you can lean into whatever strengths that you want to spotlight, whatever, you know, character traits that you want to build into what it is that makes working with you different than working with those other people, both within your company, in your market, and at other companies in your market who are offering the same services that you are. So, so to sum that up then is, I love what you said there. Cause I've always wondered about this, you know, cause I hear people talk about branding. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, but that, I get how Apple computer can have branding. How, how can me loan officer Carl White or branch manager Carl White or whatever. So basically it's like, if, if, if I want Ginger to introduce me to her friends, family, or coworkers, or she's looking to buy, sell, refinance a home. What do I want her to say to those people about who I am? And then me, the task on me, be that person or be that process. I love that. Absolutely. I've heard it so said sorry. I've just I've heard it said before that it's what mm. people say about you when you're not in the room. Mm. So just exactly to your point, Carl is saying, okay, if I'm going to introduce you, it's mm. like if I'm going to introduce Brittany to um to you, Carl, and, and you, you're saying, hey, I don't know what to do with my brand. I'm going to say, you know what? Brittany is the person you need to talk to. She's going to walk you through the process. She's going to explain it in a way that it's easy to understand. She's going to make it fun. And she's going to give you a lot of things that you never thought about. That's what I would say. I mean, that's the kind of thing that I see mm. as far as what that is. I like and that. Being able to, to, you know, share that. So we're getting so close on time and I know it's going to happen like this. So the next step, so your acronym super. So the first one is to share your story. The second one is to understand your customer story, right? Yes. 
And in the book, I talk about exactly what that means, the idea of leading with empathy rather than authority, because they're a great one-two punch, but only if you've got that empathy there. There's a great, great quote from Teddy Roosevelt, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So the things that you can do to sort of showcase that, um, I, I break down exactly how to understand your customer story, what they're struggling with, that transformation that they're looking to overcome, how you help them with the reservations they may be feeling, proving that you're the one that's right for them. Um, so all of those things. And then I'll just keep going if that's okay with you. Yes, this yes. <laughs> you goes right into P, which is the third pillar of the supermodel. And P stands for personalize. And I talk about the platinum rule. I talk about the idea that every customer is expecting customization and personalization these days because they're comparing you not just to the best experience they've had getting a house or getting a loan, but with the best experiences they've had everywhere with companies big and small. So I offer strategies for how you can use technology and also human touch to increase the feeling of personalization when somebody is working with you. E stands for exceed expectations. I firmly believe that there's really only three kinds of interactions that exist in the world. After somebody works with you and during the course of working with you, they're going to feel only one of three ways ever. And that's better, worse, or exactly the same. In every interaction, you're going to leave them better, worse, or the same as when you found them. So I talk about the power of doing little things to maximize moments so that you're creating these net positive experiences in your wake. Like we all have those friends that we don't even want to pick up the phone when we see their name. because We're like, oh, this is going to be so draining. Like that's a net negative expectation based on our experience with that person. So I talk about the idea of intentional experience design, what it means, how you can have your brand sort of come alive and showcase who you are at every step of your customer's journey before, during, and after working with them. And then finally, the R in super stands for repeat. And you know, there's a quote <laughs> Which that we I forget love. about sometimes, right? You do. And it's like, sometimes people are like, okay, cool. Like I, I figured out what I want my customer experience to be. I'm done. And I yeah. always say like, this is not a set it and forget it. You can't do it one time and be like, check. It's all about showing up every day in every interaction for every customer. So in the R pillar of the supermodel, I talk about some of the technology and automation that you can use to uh, create systems around these things that truly make you different from the other people in your market who are doing something exactly the same or very similar to what you're doing. I love it. So just, I'm going to, we try to keep it at 30 minutes. So I have a question. Timothy's asking, do you do consulting for private companies? And I think that's one of the great things that I loved you coming into the mortgage industry is we, we need, a lot of us need help. It's like, you know, how do you do this? We have great customer stories, right? Um, but I think as a whole, as an industry, we really don't do a great job of sharing a lot of those stories. So do you do consulting? Um, well, or do they just need so to get much. the bit? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for asking, Timothy. I don't do consulting at this time only because I'm so busy. I've got 50 something speaking gigs this year, but I have several amazing partners. Um, so if you want to send me an email, I'm Brittany at BrittanyHodak.com. And based on what it is that you're looking for, I would be happy to make an introduction to a trusted advisor um, who either I've worked with or know people who has worked with who can help you with whatever aspect of your company storytelling or branding or experience experience you're looking to work on. Great. Well, and I know um, one of those things too, and you're probably, hopefully you're speaking at some events in the mortgage industry, because I would love to be able to see you again. Uh, I think I do have a couple of mortgage events coming up this year. Yes. Yay. You have to let me know what they are. Um, I'm going to put, so if you want to get a hold of Brittany, it's brittanyhodak.com. You can go to get her book um, and follow the instructions. And I'm going to bring this back because I, you know, I wanted to do the podcast part of the link because I think that there are opportunities in here, Carl, to where gearing some of those questions, being yeah. able to, when a loan originator is doing an interview with someone on a podcast, that they can kind of ask some of the questions that you're asking to uncover that with real estate agents. Are you thinking that that's a possibility, Carl, too? Yeah, I, I'm thinking the questions would go around, you know, this super. I think that's... Uh... I think that's a really good outline. Hey, can, can I, I know we're up on top of that. I'm, I'm dying to ask one question. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can of I ask course, one question? Yeah. Okay. So give me, give me one action item to take away. So I'm, I, 
I just finished listening. I went, man, this sounds like really good stuff. Give me one thing to go do. One thing that you can do is ask yourself, what do you do at the end of every transaction to make yourself stand out? Hmm. What is it? It could be something online, offline. Pick one thing that you know is going to be high impact, whether that's you're going to take the listing photo and turn it into a puzzle, or you're going to have somebody do <clears throat> a watercolor painting of the homeowners in front of the house, or maybe you're going to just send a nice handwritten note with something that, you know, calls back to something about working with that customer, you know, referencing something that they did or said. But ask yourself, what's one thing that you can repeat every time at the end of every transaction to like put a bow on that mm -hmm. part? of the customer's experience with you. I love I like it. That. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Brittany, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you for having loved me. having you. Hopefully you'll come back on again because I know based on the questions we're getting and I can't even get to the ones that are on Facebook right now. Um, we, we definitely need your help. So I appreciate all you do. Um, you can get the book, super fans, creating super fans on Amazon. I really recommend it. And there you go. She just dropped it in there. Oh, although I think I just sent it to the panelists. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Well, I'll put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> just search creating super fans on Amazon. You'll find it. <laughs> Very good. So thank you so much, Carl. Thank you. I know you need to hop and make sure and tune in. So next week, if you're joining us live, we have Kyle Seagraves, who's joining us. Kyle has over 124,000 subscribers on his YouTube, and uh, he's going to share how he uh, has managed to get to that point and what he's doing to manage all the lead he's, leads he's getting. So, Brittany, thanks again, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks so much, Ginger and Carl. I'll talk okay. to you soon. Bye-bye.